This week in Taylor's Travels, we're in the Monalia Hills of Invernessia. I'm here with stalker Jimmy Irvin, and I'm keeping a low profile because we're just witnessing one of the greatest events in nature. The red deer rut started early this year in these parts on the 1st of October. It is now the end of October and the rut is coming to a close. Even though the minds of these animals are on other things, we have to stalk in carefully. We reach a spying point 200 yards from the group. We pause for Jimmy to explain the biology of the beasts. The rut starts with the big, the big stags. They'll, they'll uh, take over the hinds. They'll come out to the hinds, yeah. and they take over the hinds, and they'll hold that hinds as long as they can, until, you know, either another big stag comes in and chases him out, or yet, uh, he, he loses his weight, and more or less that's him finished. He will sort of make his way home then, like. Then the middle class take over. And the same thing happens again. Then the young ones, the smaller stars take over. So these are the young ones we're seeing here? There is some big ones just in there, mm -hmm. sort of the middle class ones. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the right big boys are home. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more or less home now, like. But you know? that time. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it just, you know, it's like a, it's a bit like a ball, it's revolving, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it's just amazing how nature works with them, like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. And then once the rut's over, what does the makeup of the herd Well, then? once the rut's over, all the stags, most of the stags, the big lads, will go back to wherever the winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping most of our big lads come home. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy takes his deer extremely seriously. Back at the yard, he shows us a selection of heads. So, so tell me about this deer. Uh, well, the reason why we shot this lad is because he's uh, beginning to go back uh, on his uh, big points here. Mm -hmm. You know, if he had his points out, just out level with this, then we, we would have left him, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's the only reason why we take him out was because he was uh, just going back. And the teeth uh, for aging, um, I'll just leave him there, is uh, just here. This stag is not, you know, he's, he's about roughly about seven, eight year old, and uh, it's just the way the closer to the jaw, the older he is. Those are just the heads from the deer shot this year. In a shed, Jimmy has some extraordinary trophies, going back decades. This here is what I call a four-cornered four -cornered stag. He's got one, two, three, four cornets. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been damaged in growth, and uh, it's more or less four cornets, four horns, growing out these. And did each of those grow each year in velvet and then...? Um, it's hard to say because uh, oh, I killed them, mm -hmm. so I didn't <laughs> so know the following year. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, it's, I've never ever seen it before. Mm -hmm. Never ever thing. seen it before. None of this would be possible without Jimmy's careful management techniques. And then uh, in, the, in the winter time, that's where we're hinds. We go in there for shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen the whole lot; just they all head for there when there's a storm coming. Uh, there'd be now there'd be around about 350, uh, roughly about that hinds going in there when the you know when the, when there's a fight out like you know because this just goes this just goes totally white and there's no no grazing up on there so they've got to come down so they do scraping in the woods or on some of the knolls like you know mm -hmm. but then when you've got the deer doing that the scraping you've got the grouse comes in behind the deer and they get the pickings. You know, when the deer open it up, it's the same as the, if there's hares, you know, they're there and getting the scrapings too, and it, they all work for one another mm. just to survive, like, you so know? keep the balance themselves. Oh, aye, yes. Mm. Jimmy is not just about deer, deer and more deer. He takes an holistic approach to wildlife in the estate. He has strong views about the politics of deer. You know, estates up in, up in the highlands, you know, that's where it all started off with sort of, you know, sporting estates being deer, grouse and salmon fishing. Not white other species out to achieve something else, like mm -hmm. you know. So it's uh, it's just it's all wrong. So so I definitely think, just say for instance, if there was a place buying an estate, an owner, a wealthy owner, they should put into it a uh, sort of rule or whatever into it, saying right, whatever's on that ground, you must look after. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm meaning? So you can conserve what's on the ground? Yes, mm -hmm. not, not wipe them out just to 
achieve one. You know, say if a man came up here and bought this estate and he wanted grouse, if it was written down in it that you you have to have all everything is here, then that's it. He can't change that, and that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're wanting a grouse moor, go down into Yorkshire and buy one. If, you know, that's where there is grouse moors down there. Mm -hmm. But don't don't buy an estate and then just uh, wipe everything out just to achieve uh, uh, sort of one thing like. Mm -hmm. That's my view on it, like, but probably a lot of people will disagree with that. Like. My colleagues at Countryside Alliance Scotland are working to change political opinion in Scotland about deer. If you'd like to go stalking with Jimmy, contact sporting agent Lackey Smith on email ls at highlandsporting.com. Jimmy starred in a series of DVDs about Highland gamekeepers. For a copy of Life of a Highland Keeper, visit www.countryside-video .co.uk. For more about the work of the Countryside Alliance, go to www.countryside-alliance.org.uk.